This is at the, the kind of the blue level, kind of your age, 13, 14, is kind of the, the key age in our sport. Then there's this other thing called summertime and long course. Okay, and unfortunately, we don't have summertime uh, about six months of the year, or we could really we could really have some fun. But we have to maximize our opportunities when we hit summer. Okay, and when when I was watching the difference between the the 13-14 uh, kind of group on Tuesday and the 15-year-olds last night as a group, uh, I was reminded of the difference in that, to some degree, in that age. Uh, it was very different atmosphere with the group last night. There was, a, there was a, a, an attention to uh, what was trying to be accomplished. There was an investment in that as a group at a whole nother level beyond what I saw on Tuesday. Okay, uh, I didn't offer a uh, dive thing beforehand, but if I did, everybody would have been running over there to take advantage of that. There wouldn't have been anybody sitting behind or anybody kind of casually waiting for peer pressure to, to make a decision as to whether they should be involved in doing extra. Okay, uh, When I was giving sets, there wasn't people chatting and talking and interrupting other people. All the 15-year-olds were paying attention, trying to learn. Um, and to some degree, that's that's a that's a that's an age thing. That's just a maturity thing. That, uh, but to some degree, it's just a, it's a um, it, it, what you guys got to understand is what that says to the people that are working with you, your teammates. What it says to your teammates is, I'm interested in helping you get better. I'm interested in not interrupting you because I'm respecting your time and space. Uh, it says something to the coach. What you're saying is important, coach. What you're saying is uh, is is, uh, is part of uh, making me better, okay? And so a lot of you, you don't even know it probably. It's probably the same thing you run into at school. Many of you are more coachable or less coachable, okay? When I when I hear when I hear uh, somebody say, you know, I don't like this teacher, I don't like this coach, or something, it usually has to do with a two-way street. It usually has to do with not only how you receive their uh, their coaching, but also how you give back energy. Okay, so what I, the, my main point I want to make this morning is is to, to work on your coachability right now. Okay, coachable athletes do this. One is they show up on time. Two is they come in eager. Okay, I saw when I walked in the parking lot with some folks this morning. They were eager. I loved it. Uh, so you, you guys, when you came in this morning, I had good eagerness on your face for the practice today. I'll bet you had a good practice. Uh, I, I, I would say I can tell probably to a 98% uh, amount how you're practicing to go by the way you walk in the door for practice. I mean, that's, that's true for these elite guys, which today I had to adjust the practice today for the elite guys because I didn't sense that they were ready for really what I wanted to give them in practice today, which what I would have given them would have probably made them a little bit better swimmers today than what I ended up giving them because I had to pull back a little bit and and I wasn't able to put the hammer all the way down like I wanted to this morning. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but that's, that's what coaches do. The other thing is, if you're more coachable, then you're going to get coached more. That's just the facts of life. You know what? You're We are human beings. We like coach. We like to coach people who we who we think are invested. We like to coach people who say thank you after they get uh, help. We like to coach people who uh, are eager and uh, that, that, that want to stay after a little bit or want to do the harder interval or the, you know, just, you know, that's a, that's a called a coachable student athlete. And, and that's my challenge, you guys, to become a more coachable student athlete with that eagerness that today, Kate was doing, you guys don't know if you're Kate yet, Kate's a new elite swimmer. She just graduated from Harvard University, one of the greatest, well, they had the best school in the country. Uh, Stanford guys could argue with that a little bit, but uh, let's go with Harvard being the best. And uh, is now pursuing swimming with a laser focus, whereas before she split her, her attention between her academics and that. 
And uh, would you, uh, when you've seen that kind of relationship, especially in an Ivy League school where nobody's on scholarship, nobody's getting paid to swim, everybody's swimming because they want to swim, what would you say the dynamic of what I'm talking about? How would you, how would you uh, describe that in your <coughs> dynamics of life? You know everyone wants to be there, and you never question whether or not someone wants to try to work hard, and you know if you work next to someone, that they're giving it everything they got, and that we have a big thing on our team where we leave school and all of our other problems, and check them at the door, and I think it makes a really positive environment, because no matter what else is going on, you can just focus on the swim set, and then you leave, you can go stress about what paper you had to do the next day, or whatever. Or having to mow the grass, or having to yeah, call whatever. some new little tingly girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever whatever issues you guys have at, at, at this stage. But I think that's what I'm saying. Is it, so it's a, it's a, the environment is, I'm here to get better, coach. And when you have that eagerness, I just want to challenge you to, to have that eagerness. And that eagerness doesn't start after you arrive and the warm-up's over and the main set starts. It starts before you ever arrive. It really, honestly, the eagerness starts when you're the one getting your parents to get out the door, uh, encouraging them to get, get you here. Yeah, that's that's eagerness. Okay, a uh, really cool thing yesterday, and uh, you know I only have an in of one with your age group, and that's Alyssa, which was yesterday we were going over to visit some people's house, and we were like, you know, and, and my wife was like, uh, like Alyssa, why don't you just come with me? You know, you don't need to go to the afternoon practice. And she's like, no, I want to go. I want to go to afternoon practice. She's, she's you know, the orange practice, but so she, uh, she you know, she ended up we, we changed our family schedule to work around her. And your parents are the same way. They want to know that you want to do this and that you're eager. When you go home today, do you go home and complain about how hard it was? Do you go home and, and, and let them know the, of the treachery and uh, the pain that you were put through? Or do you talk about the opportunity you had today to swim in this beautiful facility in this beautiful setting with a combination of the best, some of the best 13, 14s in the state of North Carolina, some of the, the future senior national, many senior, future senior national level swimmers. That's what, that's that's the if you're doing that, you're gonna have to get them on board as well. Okay, so try to think through that. Try to think through why, you know, what environment you're creating around yourself in practice, and then take it one layer out. What environment are you creating around those around you? Okay, and uh, let them know that you're eager to do this. I see eager eyes, guys. I see eager eyes in this room generally, but your technique of communicating those eager eyes can improve. And if you do that. Let me assure you, you'll be coached. Uh, you'll be coached better and better and better. Okay. Uh, one of our eager guys on Elite is Joel, and he's dealing with a pretty, pretty big shoulder challenge right now. And he was a, a uh, captain at Ohio State for a couple of years in a row because of some of those characteristics. You want to add something to the, this topic? Yeah. Um, two, two main points. Um, so the best team that I was on when I was there, um, and I see a lot of characteristics on this team. Um, we created an atmosphere for each other. Um, try and think about each other as well. Um, it's hard to sort of get in somewhere, and if there's a lot of people that are have sort of negative attitudes, to sort of go against the grain and try and be positive and encouraging. Um, it's really easy to sort of be like, look at a set and be like, wow, this is hard. Um, I'm going to complain about this, make excuses. Um, the more people, and like, once you get a majority of people that are sort of